This video will teach you to memorize massive amounts of information quickly and to retain that information for long periods of time. This method uses the brain's native capability to navigate through space or location and time or sequence. As an overview, you can simply imagine yourself going through a room with specified places in the room. Each place has an object by which to remember it. Right now, imagine a room, say your bedroom. Imagine the entryway. Second, imagine walking from the entryway to the foot of your bed. The entryway is step one, the foot of your bed is step two. Imagine a third location in your bedroom, say a chest of drawers. Fourth, the head of your bed. Fifth, a picture or mirror. Sixth, a desk. Seventh, a bookshelf, and so on. Mentally walk through each step, each step in your room until you can walk it backwards and forwards. When you have mastered that, pick a random spot in the room and walk it from there. This is the first step in constructing a memory mansion. Instead of remembering a room, you can also uh, construct rooms. In the following steps of the video, I will, give you an, I will give you an entry room. The second step in your memory mansion is to imagine little representations of the things you want to remember. We will look at an example of this in the video as well. The third step is to simply place the representations at the various points in the room. Again, walk back and forth through the room with the representations. When you're able to do that, you have memorized the list for a long time. Let's look at constructing a room. Okay, at this point, you can either close your eyes and imagine each step of the way, or use the images I provide in the video. My suspicion is that if you use your imagination, the images will be more vivid, but do whatever works. First, you walk into your room and look at your feet. At your feet, you will find a welcome mat. This is your first step. Now, look to your right and a little behind you. There you will see a window that looks outside into the front yard. This is your second step. Now, take a sharp left and look, at the, look to the wall. Against the wall, you will find a coat rack. This is step three. Now, take a sharp right and look to the opposite wall. Here you see two objects. The first object you see is an umbrella stand. The second, uh, uh, sorry, this is step four. The second object you see is a large painting hanging on the wall. This is step five. Now you have five steps. Each object is a step, so I'm going to stop pointing that out now. It is helpful at this point to stop and walk backwards through your room. Try stopping the video for a bit and walking back and forth from the welcome mat to the painting and back. So you'll start at the painting, go back to the umbrella stand, the coat rack, the window, the welcome mat, and then go from the welcome mat, the window, the coat rack, the umbrella stand, and the painting. Okay, now we're going to move away from the painting and go to the center of the room. Look down at the floor. Here we have a rug. Now look up from the rug, from the floor, to the ceiling. Hanging from the ceiling, we have a light fixture. Now take a left to the wall. At the wall, we have a mirror. From the mirror, take a diagonal right to the other cross corner of the room. In this corner, we have a statue. I like the thinker, but use whatever you like. From the thinker, we again turn to the left to the wall opposite the door we entered. Here we have the doorway out of the room. Again, it is a good idea to stop and walk back and forth between the door out and the welcome mat. When you are very comfortable moving back and forth, try picking a random spot in the room and move from there. When you are able to move back and forth through your room, and especially from any spot, then you have a nice solid image of, uh, of, your mem of a room within your memory mansion. This is a different illustration of the room. This is a top-down illustration, but it is the same room. Here again we have the first step. It's the welcome mat. Here's the second step, the window. Next, the coat rack. Now we have the umbrella stand and the painting. The rug. The light fixture. The mirror. The statue. And finally, the doorway out. 
Here is an overview of the room with all its spots. It's a good idea to draw your own room and number all the spots in the room. It is also a good idea to make a list of the room with the, with, with the tile of the room at the top of the list and each spot numbered on the list. Construct more rooms. I have 10 rooms at 10 spots. That's 100 pieces of, pieces of information. There is a trick later on where you can have uh, around 1,000, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, we have our room. Let's practice memorizing a list. Let us start with something simple, say a grocery list. At the welcome mat, imagine a bunch of apples. At the window, imagine a banana. Now in these images, I have provided a rather straightforward picture. It is helpful to provide representations that are a little outlandish and even interacting with each step. So the apples could be hiding underneath the welcome mat and the bananas could be running around outside the window. This is your choice, but choose whatever makes the image most vivid in your imagination. At the coat rack, a bunch of oranges hang from the rack. At the umbrella stand, a bunch of carrots. The painting is suddenly a painting of broccoli. You might add a story to the image. Say the painter was just infatuated with broccoli, or the painter made a portrait of the Mona Lisa except that she is made of broccoli. Adding a story to an image can help make it more vivid. At this point, it is a good idea to run back and forth between steps with each image. I find that by taking the first five items at a time and reviewing them really solidifies the representations in my imagination. From the painting, we have bread on the rug. From the light fixture, we have espresso, the world's most perfect food. In the mirror, we see milk. The thinker is sitting on a bunch of eggs. Finally, there is a huge block of cheese in the doorway. Again, stop at this point and run through the list backwards and forwards. Pick random places in the room and start from there. This makes the images more vivid in the imagination. Again, here's an overview of the room with all of the items on the grocery list uh, at each place in the room. I bet you still have all, in, all 10 items on the list. You will never need, a pap you'll never need paper and pen to go, to, the gro to go grocery shopping again. Creating images for each spot is a bit of an art, and it is highly personal. They depend on your memories and your experiences for them to remind you of the thing represented. In the next few steps, I'm going to show you how I remember numbers. This might not be how you remember numbers, but it is an example. Here's my breakdown for numbers. Zero is a goose egg. One is a blue ribbon or first place. Two is a hairdo. Do, duo, two. That's how I get from do to two. Three is a tree. Four, door. Five, beehive. Six is a pile of sticks. Seven is bread. I know that's a bit of a stretch, but bread has leaven, leaven, seven. Eight is obvious, it's an eight ball. Nine is wine. When I want to construct numbers greater than single digits, I stack them. So, for example, for the number 165, I have a blue ribbon under a pile of sticks under a beehive. Some terms we encounter in philosophy may take a bit of creativity. So, to use some of our material uh, for, about truth relations, we'll look at contrary. I like to use convict for contrary. The con in both of the terms uh, helps, helps me to link one to the other. Or, as another example, you could think of au contraire. Imagine the worst stereotypical Frenchman saying au contraire. By the way, if you are French, I deeply apologize for the bad stereotype. I use it because it sticks in my memory, not because I'm a francophobe. Anyway, you can imagine a Frenchman saying au contraire for contrary. Imagine the same Frenchman on a submarine for subcontrary, or a convict on a sub. Whatever works and whatever will remind you of the term involved. A real quick note. This next skill is kind of advanced, so you should probably wait until you have a good amount of practice with memory mansions before you try it. But there is a way to get 10 times as many spots of information. Suppose you want to memorize contrary and 10 things about contrary. Say that contrary is true makes false, or that disjunctions are often used to express contraries, and so on. Well, imagine 10 images about contraries and place them around your, around your image of whatever you're using for contrary, in this case a convict. You have top, bottom, left, right, each corner, in front of the image, and behind the image. 
For 10 rooms at 10 spots, each with 10 places around each spot, that's 1,000 pieces of information. That's basically it. First thing, construct your rooms. I recommend 10 rooms with 10 spots. Then construct 10 images for numbers 0 through 9. It's just handy to have and good practice. Then I would start memorizing that long list of items I pointed out in class. We'll go over some of this in class and we'll see how you're doing. Until then, have fun and see you next time.